Hey guys, welcome back to this week's video. Thanks so much for tuning in. You know, I'm a huge fan of Criminal Minds. It's a show that's been on TV for about 15 years or so. I think 2020 was the last season. And one of my favorite characters on the show is Spencer Reed. He's kind of that dorky guy with glasses, you know, brown frizzy hair. And he's the one that always just kind of out of nowhere starts to profile criminals, right? He will tell you what their behaviors are, what their characteristics are, um, who they might be, what their age might be, what their you know culture, where they come from. And that's what FBI profilers do. They give you kind of a snapshot into um, a particular criminal. And today we're talking about something similar, although I don't think it's related to criminals or breaking the law. It's influencer profiling. And unlike criminal minds where the FBI profiler will give you information about a suspect or a criminal, and all of that information is based on years of experience, education, and uh, you know these are psychologists who are going to give you their you know professional opinion on who this uh, particular criminal might be. Now with influencer profiling, it's it's a bit different. It's giving you information, it's giving you insights about who these individuals are, but it's all based on public data. It's based on behavior and content and conversations that certain influencers are having in the marketplace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through one example of an influencer profile. It's not a real influencer. It's not real data, but I want to show you the components that are important in, in order for you to make some actionable decisions. I'm also going to go through um, a couple of graphs to show you how you can track and uncover insights from a group of influencers um, over the course of time. So you can predict certain trends. You can see what types of trends that are declining based on data. And again, as I said earlier, public data that's available to pretty much anybody on the internet as long as you have the right tools and the right platforms and the time to spend uh, mining that information. Okay, so jumping into this example, we have Michelle Gomez and she is not a real person. She is not an influencer in this context. And we have a, a profile here and there's a lot of information on here, but it's really important to dissect each one because each one has a purpose. Now, in the upper left-hand corner is basically her name, how large her network is, and how large her network is by channel. And this is important because as you think about an activation program, you might decide to launch a specific program in Instagram or Twitter or on LinkedIn, again, based on her usage, right? If she spends more time and has a larger community on Twitter, that might be the channel that you want to, you know, reach her or, or engage with her uh, through organic influencer marketing. Now on the right, we have topical relevance, and this is basically a cluster analysis, and it's based on the topics that are most relevant to Michelle. So each of these boxes represent volume. So the larger the box, the larger volume of, con of her conversation. So she talks a lot about future workplace, HR technology, digital transformation, and, and employee experience. And you can see that within each of those boxes, there are little sub boxes or smaller boxes. So those are subtopics. So for example, the way to read this is, if you look under future workplace, she talks a lot about gig economy, remote teams, HR technology, flex working, huddle room, Zoom, et cetera. And, and obviously it's COVID-19, so it kind of makes sense that she would be talking about these types of topics. Now, um, again, these are words that she's using in her language on social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. These are things that she talks about the most, okay? so. Put that in the back of your mind as you think about when you're building a narrative or you're building a program in order to reach a group of influencers, why you might want to have that you know, handy because you're going to want to use that same language in the content that you are publishing in order to engage with these influencers because you want to be as relevant to these influencers as possible. So the only way to do that is through speaking the language that they speak. Okay, I've said this many times before. And by the way, these keywords, there's probably hundreds if not thousands of keywords within each uh, a topic. So this is just, again, the top, I guess, 10 to 12 topics and subtopics. Uh, literally, if you, when you export into Excel, there's thousands of rows of data, and they're all words and language that influencers are using, okay? Now, moving down, down to the bottom right-hand corner, these are people who are influenced by Michelle, okay? So just based on influencer mapping, and I, I did a video on this, I think, last week, but this, these are people she's connected to, these are people she influences, and it's pretty easy to find that information, right? It's just based on how often these individuals are sharing her content, retweeting her, commenting on her content, and, and other, other data points. But it's really good to know who influences her so that you can figure out, okay, if she's not returning my phone calls or she's not engaging with me on Twitter, maybe I need to engage with you know William or Kirk or Madeline and in an effort to surround Sal Michelle Gomez with uh, with content that's um, either mentions our company name or at least is you know some relevance to her so that she can start to you know wonder who you are and maybe engage with you. 
Now, on the bottom left-hand corner is media mentions. Now, this is important because when I talk about measuring influence, it's not just about how large their community is or how much engagement they, they, they get from their content. Um, I always ask the question, okay, if this is an influencer, is she mentioned in the media by traditional media? So is she mentioned in articles or is she publishing bylines? Um, in, this, in this case, she is. Okay, And this data point is what I would call reference. So is the media referencing Michelle? And in this case, she is. More importantly, this last box here is audience mentions. Now, I talk a lot about audience intelligence, and I think it's probably the most important data point that you can... Uh, account for as it relates to you know marketing b2b marketing etc because um, if you can if you can build an audience there are so many things that you can extract in order to you know define programs and campaigns um, you can test the relevancy of influencers and that's what we're doing in this case so imagine you have you know she's a hr executive right michelle gomez imagine you have a audience of you know 15,000 hr professionals people who work in HR, in staffing, in benefits, etc. They're, you know, having conversations online. And by the way, there's thousands of these people who exist. Now you have a, a you have a an audience of let's just say again 15,000. What you can do is you can cross reference Michelle Gomez and her her handles, her anything that she's published online, her name, how often she is being mentioned or referenced by a particular audience. Now if you're an HR software company, you shouldn't really care how many mentions she gets from the world. You need to care how often she's being mentioned and or referenced by people that you want to sell to. Okay, because if if, if uh, your audience and your customers or future customers are mentioning Michelle and you can get Michelle to engage with you publicly and maybe through some type of paid program, then all of a sudden you're reaching a very, very unique and targeted audience with third party validation. In this case, it would be an influencer like Michelle Gomez. Okay, so now we're going to transition into looking at influencers as a group. So imagine, for example, that this is the top 20 influencers in security. Okay, so the top 20 influencers who are either traditional media or non-media analysts, you know, or not um, consultants, what have you. These are people who are influential within the topic of security. Now, let's start with the conversation analysis on the right. Very similar to what I just showed you at for Michelle, right? Michelle, that was her content that she's publishing as an individual. What this is, it's the same concept, you know, the, the, the color-coded kind of pie pieces are all based on volume. So this group of influencers, when you cluster everything together, all of their conversations, all of their sharing, they tend to talk about data security and AI the most, right? That takes up about 50% of their conversation. Then you have Industry 4.0, Automation, and Data Science. Now, even within the subtopics of each of these topics, you have things like analytics, threat intelligence, data breach. Again, these, just to reiterate, these are the key words and, and phrases that this audience is using publicly, right? Through all kinds of channels, whether it's, you know, publishing on their blogs, on Reddit, within forums, on social media, okay? So that's, that's important to understand as a group what is important to them. On the left, this is basically cross-referencing content with uh, media habits or media sharing. So for example, when the group of influencers, again, as an aggregate, are talking about security or sharing content related to security, these are the content sources that they're sharing from the most. So LinkedIn, Dark Reading, ZDNet, etc. And And when you do that, you can start to, well, there's a lot of things you can do, right? You can give that intelligence back to your PR team to say, look, if we want to reach these influencers who are in fact reaching our audiences and we're a data science company, well, then we need to focus on these five channels down here, right? In order to not just reach our influencers, but reach the audience. So again, it's, it's very actionable in that it's not just counting numbers. It's not just, you know, or, or counting numbers over time, um, but because you have to spend time and begin to think about strategically how you can use this data to um, inform a program and or a campaign or just the day-to-day -day drumbeat of, of media engagement and influencer engagement again whether it's organic or paid now again same concept let's just say top 20 influencers but we're looking at over time what are the topics that are most important to this audience now secure these are the same topics by the way from the previous screen security industry 4.0 you know AI etc now you can see from January up into you know December the, con the, the industry 4.0 as a, as a topic is growing in demand, right? These are, that topic in itself is demanding the attention of this audience, in this case, influencers. Whereas future of work was really high back in January, it's declining. 
you can see, you know, uh, security in general is kind of all over the place and, you know, AI, etc. So this is a way to kind of predict the conversation of influencers. And that's, that's important so that you can think about how you can start to leverage and build your own content, leveraging the keywords and the phrases that influencers are using um, in order to be relevant. Now, my, my next video, I'm going to talk about how to use audience intelligence and or influencer intelligence to um, drive brand visibility in Google. And that's kind of the way that you would do this here. So that was a very quick example of building an influencer profile, not just at the at the individual level, but also at the aggregate level when looking at kind of groups of influencers. Now, I talk a lot about audience intelligence and maybe you're sick of it or maybe you love it. I love it. But even when you're talking about 5, 10, 15 influencers and start to analyze them as a group, that's audience intelligence. Whether the group is 15 or 1500, you are analyzing and clustering large data sets of, of content, conversations, and behavior in order to find some insights um, in order to take action from. Now, one of my favorite tools is Analytica. It's, it's a great step to really find influencers and you can analyze those conversations, um, but it takes human analysis to actually, um, and we export a lot of data. We, you know, we collect it, we migrate it, we mine it. We want to make sure that we are not just, you know, ensuring that we have the right influencers, but that we are in fact finding the right influencers. Okay. So that takes time. So don't cut corners. Don't, you know, just, you know, pull a list somewhere or Google, you know, top 10 you know, AI influencers because they could have been influential six months ago or a year ago, but influence changes over time. So doing this analysis, I would say six, every three to six months is going to be important. And that my friends concludes our time together. Just want to say thank you again for tuning in. Uh, I can never be too grateful for the feedback and support I've gotten along the way. This is video number 35 and you know, I started this back in January as a way to really overcome my lack of confidence in doing videos. And I got to be honest, I love doing videos now. In fact, I will record a video um, answering my wife when she's calling me or texting me um, and we're in the same home. So again, appreciate it. You have really helped me um, overcome that confidence through all the great feedback that I get on back channels. And uh, you know, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. You know, I don't know everything. I want to learn. I want to continue to evolve. Um, but this is just based on my experience, right? It's based on things that I've done, things that I counsel clients to do. And so if you don't agree or you think I should do something better or there's other ways to get a better result, I'm open. Let's chat about it. I want to learn. Let's collaborate on it. Um, and again, thank you so much for, for your, your comments and your, and if you just want to show me some love, Hey, share it. That's fine too. Share, like, subscribe, you know, share my channel is what the YouTubers say. So, and COVID-19 is still upon us. So please stay safe and please be healthy. And until I see you next time, have a great day.